All right, hello. We're fucking back here at Hustler. So, hello, hello, we'll try. What's going on? The last time I was here in this building here at Hustler, I lost and donated a half a million dollars, more than half a million dollars. Today, I will not be doing that because I only have 400,000 to lose today. So that's the plan. Uh, we'll s hopefully I don't lose 400,000, but uh, the bankroll challenge rolls on. Uh, we're playing, I think, 50, 100, 200 today. Have the lovely lineup here on a Friday here at Hustler right behind me. So uh, I'm just getting in. Might be a little late, but I've got chips ready to fire. And let's just get ready and rolling. Let's, let's go. Also, lovely Chinese New Year tree here. Lovely. Okay, I'm done. I'm done rambling. I'm going to go gamble now and uh, hopefully win a house. The game is 50 100 with a $100 big blind ante. I buy in for $100,000, and we're going to get right underway here, trying to crawl out of this downswing. About an hour and a half into the stream, I pick up the premium 8-5 offsuit. I'm in the $200 straddle, and Pepe in the cutoff puts in the $400 straddle, because... Why not gamble? Anyways, action folds to me. I decide to limp in and call because it's only $200 more. And we end up seeing a limped flop. So action folds to Pepe. He checks his option. And we're going to see a flop of ace, nine, five, all diamonds. Here, flopping bottom pair, no diamond in my hand. I check it to my opponent. And he decides to fire out $1,000, which is pretty freaking large, to be honest with you. Anyways, I decide to call. Turn is the seven of clubs, bringing me a straight draw. I check it to Pepe, and he fires out $2,000. At this point, what am I supposed to do? I'm certainly not going to go anywhere, I don't think. Probably could fold, but, you know, I'm not the smartest. I call the 2000 and we're going to go to a river, which is the 10 of diamonds. Here, I lead for $5,000, because I think, you know, I'm going to have a lot of diamonds in my hand, a lot of high ones, and it might go check, check on the river, and obviously, I, I, I don't think I win with bottom pair. So, thinking that I have a pretty good bluff candidate, I toss in $5,000 as a bluff, and he snap calls with the seven high flush. From two pair to a flush, Pepe scoops a $17,000 pot, and immediately donating money to Pepe here as I just lose a bunch of small pots along the way. My chip stack is down to like 70000 just under that, give or take, so already stuck 30 k without a whole lot of action going on. We move on to the next spot with pocket tens. We get our buddy Pepe, who just took a bunch of money from me, raises it up to $600. Big Blood makes the call for 500 and here with pocket tens, thinking I have a pretty good hand. I three bet things up to 4200 Finally, it's my time to get a real hand in my time to bloat up the pots. Here, Pepe does call for 4200 and the big one ends up getting out of the way. So we're going to go heads up to a flop out of position, which comes queen nine seven, two diamonds and a spade. Here, only sitting with pocket tens, a card over my pair. And on this board, I decided to just check this one. I don't think I really want to put that much money into middle. But when Pepe does fire out $5,000, what am I supposed to do? I, I must call. I must call at some point here, and uh, this time sticking in another 5k. We're going to go to a turn, which is the 8 of clubs. This is a pretty dicey one, as it does improve me to a straight draw. Now open-ended with a 10 in my hand, along with a pair, of course. I check it one more time to him, and he fires out $15,000. Well, already not really super comfortable with the situation, but I do think I must continue because I have a straight draw. I still have a pair. Pepe is certainly capable of having many bluffs. So I decided to call again in the river bink, six of clubs. And here I take my time deciding whether I want to bet or check, and it seems like a pretty similar spot as last hand the first thing you saw where i led on the river as a bluff i probably should be leading on the river again here at this time actually having a good hand because i do think this river is going to go check check a lot but sadly i ended up in the wrong decision i check he snap checks this one back i show my hand and pepe is not very happy looks like i sucked out on him and i did against his ace queen i get some revenge here in a forty nine thousand dollar pot and immediately pepe throws a temper tantrum and decides to get off of the stream we're only two hours into the stream he's supposed to play for all of it but for some reason losing one pot against me he's gonna lock up his profits and head to gamble in the baccarat tables i guess Dgens are going to do what Dgens do and not want to play poker, but instead spin it up in Baccarat. So good luck to him as he walks off the stage. But here, lucky to win this one. I'm only stuck $5,000 in the night, so at least it saved my day, at least for now. Brief interruption to the video because on my downtime here as I'm making this video for you guys, I actually just want to show off what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. 
I actually don't really get to have any sort of like chill days and moments, but when I do, I finally found one today. I'm playing on WPT Global, uh, sponsor of the channel, sponsor of this video, and always a good time here because I finally get a chance to play some cash games, which there's plenty available to be had. If you look at the lobby here, there's just infinite cash games over and over again. Uh, this game I'm hopping into is a 50, 100, 200 Chinese Yuan game where 10, five obviously not a very good hand. And if cash games aren't your thing, they have infinite tournaments as well. These are just all the tournaments over a $100 buy-in. You don't have to play over $100 buy-ins because they have pretty much uh, every single stake. If I can find the filter here that I have, uh, I just add in free rolls, micro stakes, low stakes, all the stakes. You can see there is a very large sample of tournaments on a daily basis all the time. So there's already four tournaments that you can hop into on any given day. This is currently like... 11 a.m. here <laughs> uh, and there's all these tournaments going on right now actually four more tournaments that you can hop into ranging from two dollars to a hundred and ten dollars so if you want to join me see me on the felt use my code down below to join WPT global there's always really cool free rolls happening on their discord channel as well so you can get all that information using the link down in the description below but if you want to hop in you can only play when you're outside the US and you can use the code rampage for a deposit bonus so Always a good time on there. I'll see you on the felt. Let's just get back into the video. Moving right along about an hour after that hand, picking up another hand onto my straddle. The small one raises the $700. I'm in the $200 straddle with ace jack off. Big blind calls the 700 and I am not going to stand for this. Gonna play crazy, gonna be raising a lot. And this is a pretty good hand to do it with. I three bet to $3,000. The original razor in the small blind gets out of the way, but the big blind does call. So we're going to go to a flop, which comes ace, nine, nine, two spades out there. My opponent checks over to me and with top pair finally having some value, I throw out $1,500. And to my surprise, my opponent does call for $1,500. So we're going to see a turn, which is the seven of spades. The flush draw does get there. I am not super pleased about this, to be honest with you. So I'm going to check this one back and we're going to see a river, which is the deuce of clubs here on this brick river card. My opponent, Greg throws out $8,000. What do you want me to do? I have top pair. I have a good one at that. Does he have some bluffs? It seems like he could, but sadly he has just a flush Jack eight of spades. He's going to take this one down for about a $26,000 pot. Schlubby Greg taking it down, doing it for the people. So nice hand to him, and we're going to have to rebound because about 30 minutes later, picking up king nine in early position, raising that up to $600, I get the button, big blind, and straddler to call. So four ways to a flop we go, which comes king, queen, four, two diamonds. Here with top pair, not the best top pair, a relatively medium strength one. Action's going to check around here as I don't want to put much money in the middle. The turn is the eight of spades, though, brings in two flush draws on the board. And when action checks to me, I think it's time to finally put in a bet and multi-way two flush draws. Very dynamic. I fire out three thousand dollars thinking that I could get a lot of value from draws for three thousand dollars. We get two people to make the call, two customers here, the big blind and under the gun. So off to a river we go, which is the six of hearts. Pretty innocent looking card from my perspective, all things considered. And Greg now decides to lead for $9,200. Well, I don't really understand what's going on here, but both flush draws missed. I have a top pair and Greg never raised on the flop or turn to put money in voluntarily. So I can't expect him to have a very good hand here. Uh, I don't know what bluffs he can have. He could certainly have missed flush draws and stuff, but gonna have to pay this man, especially even though there's another person behind. So I snap call, big blind folds, and yeah, the screen will tell you all I needed to know. The five, seven of hearts binks the offsuit six and scoops a 30k pot. Pretty nice life to be Greg, owning me in every single hand possible, but hey, we still have plenty of hands to go over on this stream. And this next one is another dicey one, queen six of clubs. We're on the straddle again, and there's a button raised to 500. Big blind makes the call, I make the call, and we're gonna go three ways to a flop of nine, five, seven, two diamonds and a club. Greg decides to check here in this spot, and me, I decided to take an unconventional route and lead out for $500. Just trying to be creative, trying to play hands differently. And with queen six, you know, I have a straight draw, I have backdoor flush draws, possibilities all over the place. 
So I lead for $500 and I get the button and big long to call. So we're going to a turn, which is the four of spades now. Big one checks it over to me here, and now I've improved to open-ended. Instead of just having a gut shot straight draw, I have a open-ended straight draw. So I'm gonna fire out $4,000. The button folds, but here Greg is not much of a folder, clearly. He makes the call in the big blind here, and I've got an opportunity to make all my money back if I hit the river, please. The river is the four of clubs. That's not gonna be the card I was looking for. But I think as played, I'm just gonna have to go for it, right? He never raised on the flop, and I just can't imagine him having a strong hand, right? Like, how is he ever going to have just a straight here or a set here or a full house here? It seems pretty improbable. So for that reason, he hit. So for that reason, him only having about twenty thousand dollars left in the stack, I'm gonna go for all of it. Uh, putting him on some sort of a weak hand, maybe some sort of missed flush draw, maybe just a nine. You know, he can always just full top pair, right? So I'm gonna go all in. Putting my opponent to the test, and here Craig has a much stronger hand, as you can see on screen, than I ever would have guessed and thought of. You know, we see groans and moans and thinks about it for a very, very, very long time and ends up, well, you see how strong his hand is. He ends up saying he has a four and he calls. <sighs> that is painful. I mean, obviously, like correct call. You have trips. It's such a strong hand. But considering how long it took for him to call, I felt like there was a chance I was going to get this bluff through and sadly, not. So there we go. Him scooping up another $51,000 pot. He is three for three against me. And so, so sad in my shoes, especially after I kind of slow rolled him. I, I announced a straight. I mean, you can, we can play this back. I announced a straight when he called as a troll, obviously showed the queen high in a dream. And he wasn't very happy about scooping my chips for one reason or another. He wasn't very happy about my slow roll, but it's only fun for me to slow roll the winner of the pot. I never really would slow roll the loser of the pot. Anyways, so be it. Uh, he takes it down and he takes over $100,000 from me, which is kind of crazy when you add it all up. Not long after that hand, we get involved into another spicy one. I'm on full tilt mode as I straddle to $1,000. We get the button to raise it up to 3K. Only gun player calls and here I have King 10 offsuit. Let's call for $2,000 more. I have immediately just bumped up the game in the size of this game by like 5X. So we're going to go to a flop of Queen, Queen, Jack. So I have an open ender. Action's going to go check, check, check. And the turn is the 10 of diamonds. So now I have a pair plus straight draw, and Charles throws out a bet of $5,000. Never going to fold, never going to get out of the way here. Of course, I call with lots of hopes and dreams. And when the button folds, we're going to go heads up and see the river king of hearts. Oh my goodness. How can it get any worse than this? Now Charles leads for $5,000. Very small bet, same bet, and it seems like he's just super, super, super not not in this spot. Like, Every fiber in my being makes me feel like he's just has an ace or a bluff or something. And I just can't really put myself to raise because my image is so bad. I've literally lost every single pot today. Like, how can I ever have it? And also, it, when, when Charles throws out $5,000 on the turn, how do I ever not raise with a queen of some sort or a full house? So anyways, I felt like me bluffing here wasn't going to work, even though I didn't think he had a strong hand. So instead of folding like a discipline, person would i just i just call okay five thousand dollars what harm could it really be i'm already down piles already and yeah i lose to a six of clubs not the best way to uh end off this session here but there's one more hand one more hand to go through that i hopefully can win and we're gonna go right into it because the next hand after that i'm on full tilt right I straddle for $2,000 now because, you know, let's ride this elevator because if I can't win with a 1K straddle, let's try to win with a 2K straddle. Anyways, Mike X in the cutoff calls the $2,000 and I decide to check my option with a very, very bad hand. Heads up to a flop we go of 10-9 deuce. I check it over to him and he throws out $2,000. What do you want me to do with this hand? I decide to flick it in with a call. Turn comes the seven of hearts. So it brings in a backdoor flush draw and action's gonna go check, check in this situation. And when the river is the five of hearts, the very tricky and interesting spot here, because, well, now I have uh, the six of hearts. 
That's a hand. It's a card that seems relevant. I decided to check. I, I didn't want to bluff out on the reserve here. And when Mike X throws out $5,500, I don't know what kind of pulled me in the direction of check raising. Maybe because I'm frustrated from the last hand. I didn't bluff on the river here. So I'm going to bluff on the river now. And I raise it up to 20000 because why not light another $20,000 on fire? A Honda Civic, you might call it, that I just donated to Mike X because he's going to call with the flush. And yeah, losing another $48,000 pot to end the stream, igniting all my money on fire. This is not really the best way to end any sort of poker session, but luckily the bell has been rung. The game runners, shout out to Hustler for ending the stream, preventing me from losing even more money. I'm down about $80,000 to end the night. And that's how we're gonna wrap up this session. I think I'm going through lots of levels of tilt, to say the least. Uh, cashed out and it sucks being like the biggest loser in the past like five streams or whatever that I've played on or fa past five games I'm not even close so um, in the game for 200 out for what the fuck was a stupid number one one five nine five zero so uh, didn't need to torch infinite money in a small game today but you know tilt got the better of me and now I have to figure out what I'm doing wrong because mentally it feels like I'm not there and uh, these past couple of vlogs have been rough and it's rougher to watch, rougher to be living through. So yeah, bankroll challenge now grows to like 700K because I'm stuck at least seven this past trip, a couple months. And um, time to reevaluate because I don't know how to play poker anymore and I tilt off too much and uh, we have work to do. So I'm not happy about it. There's a lot to reassess and I'll see you guys in the next one. That's it. Disappointing. Disappointing way to end. Because I was like even-ish. Then I got slow rolled by tr fucking trip fours. And then, then then there goes the ignition of money. It just lit like 80 in like maybe 10 minutes. Fun times. Fun times.